Let's go. Bet. Yo. Oh my god, it's been a while, eh? It has been a while. What's up, guys? Definitely back with another video. I went on a trip. I don't know if you've been following my Instagram and things like that, but I went on a three month backpacking trip. That's why I haven't posted in three months on YouTube, damn. But I'm back, ready to attack. I know I say that every time, but this time it's different. This time it's different because I'm a content king, baby. I'm back. Um, today, simple video, a uh, video of the Europe trip is coming out. So if anyone's been wondering, like, where's all that content that he got during his three months? It is in progress. I have a couple videos I have to make before it for people that I uh, shot for during the trip, but there's gonna be a huge trip recapping the whole thing. It's gonna be one of my biggest drops, my biggest projects ever, easily my biggest project ever because it's over three months of filming. Um, but today, simple stuff. I wanna give you guys a quick editorial, editorial, tutorial on how to, um, sorry. A big thing I have is I say um too much, but on uh, how I edit my video. So I'm gonna give you a quick, I'm gonna show you my workflow really quickly. Um, I'm gonna show you from start to finish, starting with the cuts and then, you know, how my whole workflow works with video. So if anyone's trying to get into video, kind of simple, shows you what I do and um, how you could take what I do and implement it, implement it into your workflow. So let's hop into the computer and uh, I'm gonna show you guys uh, what I do. What about this tea though? new exit baby check them out okay guys so we're in the computer now I'm just gonna run you through my whole workflow so pretty much what I do after every shoot is I have my file here and I will name it um, the name it the something that has to do with the file and then the date so this one's uh, dog shoot the first and then depending if it's video photo or audio I'll put you know video photo audio but this one is video so we'll go in then here I have all my little organizers here. I got audio, finals, which means exports and like when you're done. Footage, which is pretty much all the footage you have and graphics and green screens, things like that. Graphics is more still images that I want to add, overlay, things like that. And then finally saves and previews, which is the save files, preview files, rendered files. But if you come in here, I didn't shoot anything, but I shot a little dog video for a local girl who uh, has an Instagram account about her dogs. Yo, boys, oh. <laughs> There's just little videos of the dogs, pretty much, and I'm gonna edit this into a cute little compilation with a nice color grade. So pretty much what I'll do once I open, once I get the footage, is I'm gonna open Premiere Pro here, and I'm going to create a new project. I will choose the location. By the way, this is what I used to edit. I use Premiere Pro, but I will choose the location, and usually I'll go, like I said, into the saves and previews, depending if I'm using Premiere or After Effects, and then I'll just title it. This one's just gonna be called Dog Video. Import the footage by simply clicking File, um, Import. So you'll come here in Premiere Pro, you press File, Import, and then this screen will open up and you find where your footage is. So for example here, mine's in Downloads, this, 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 into this folder, and I can import all my footage. So now all my footage is in Premiere Pro. Since I'm shooting 4K footage now, I have a little technique for anyone shooting 4K footage. You're gonna select all of it and you're gonna do something called Create Proxies. This is pretty much Files that are dumbed down, like smaller versions. So for example, you shoot a 4K. This will create a smaller file, which is usually like a uh, resolution like 540 by like something really small, where when you're editing, this is what it'll preview it with. So then when you're done, you edit it with, the, you export it with the 4K footage, but it lets your editing be a lot faster because the files are a lot smaller. So for example, here's only a 1024 by 540 proxy. So I'll press OK, and then over here in the media encoder is where they will be created. So right now it's just creating the proxy job, so I'll give it a second for that to load. Okay, so that's done there, and pretty much now you'll see your media encoder, which is pretty much uh, an exporting software, will come here and it'll start to um, create these proxies. My computer is being a little laggy right now because I have 18 softwares open, and um, it is not really able to compensate for that. That's pretty much it. So you'll have your footage in here. I'm not going to talk about it too long. And then you're going to start making your video. So first thing I'll do is I'll drag and drop to create a sequence. I'll drop in anything. And then I'm going to grab the sequence here and separate it from the footage. The difference between a sequence uh, file and a footage file is it has this little sequence um, with the cuts and things like that. While footage, um, you'll see it here, has like audio and video kind of like... The what the sequence is, 
is all the videos together in a timeline. So if I were to create a new sequence from this sequence, it'll give me a sequence with everything that is in this timeline right here. That is just for later. If you're ever going to, by accident, forget, um, delete this right here, then you can drag in your sequence again and it'll have everything there for you. Um, so yeah, usually I just put that in a bin called uh, sequence, if I can remember how to spell it. And there you go. So moving on, I got my footage. But the thing is, I shot this in 60 frames a second, and I want it, the, the timeline to be in 24 frames a second so I can do slow-mo. If you don't know about slow-mo, I'm going to make a video very soon about that. But if not, just search up how to get super smooth slow motion, and they'll explain the whole thing of frame rates and how all that works. But if I come here, I can see that my time base, which is what the sequences is, is 50... 9 which is pretty much 60 frames a second but I want that in 24 because I want that nice cinematic look so then now if I drop this here and go to speed duration I can drop that all the way down to 40 percent and you can see it is still super smooth you can mute the audio and you can see how everything is still super smooth I have all my footage usually I like to do a little bit of edit um organizing before um whether this is for example here I'm debating if I'm going to organize organize it into both dogs so I get a good mixture to make sure I use footage from both dogs, um, whether it's location, whether it's all this. It's usually better just to have your footage a little more organized so you know where you can find what you have. So like you're like, oh, I need a shot of, you know, this dog doing a jump or something like that. Make sure that you organize your footage so later you can come back. So I'm going to do a little organization and then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so I'm done that. Um, pretty much what happens when you're done is um, you have your two files. So for me, I organize into best shots and decent shots. Um, I didn't really know what to organize into because, like, there wasn't that many videos. And, like, I, I just didn't really think. But I, I put the best shots um, here so I know, you know, I'm going to prioritize these shots. And then, you know, if I, I need any filler, then I'll go back to the decent shots. But... Pretty much, I have my sequence here. It's blank right now, no video in it, but it is on the right settings and everything. So it has, you know, 24 frames a second, 19 by 20 by 1080. But how I do my workflow is I always edit to music. So what I'll need is some music, of course. Um, so what I use for my music um, licensing, it's complicated nowadays, eh? Because uh, Instagram will, will ban you. All this stuff will ban you if you don't have your own music. So I use Epidemic Sound. Pretty much, I have a subscription, and it is uh, well, show my password. Um, it is is it it is linked to my um, it is linked to my YouTube account. All these accounts. So whenever any of the music on this will play, it does not ban me. So I can use all this. It has a huge library. You can browse. Like for example, I want acoustic music. You know what I mean? I'll show you all this acoustic music, and pretty much I can choose any song that I want. Um, so I'm going to do that because usually I'll edit my video to the music. So I'm going to choose a song and then I'll come back with, to you guys um, when I've done that. And you guys can do it as well. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm done getting my music here, here and I made a big selection because usually when I do this huge selection, I'm just going to unzip this file right here. Um, it when I, when I start to look for music, sorry, I usually keep going for a while because there's so many choices I have out there and I never know which one I want to do. So usually I'll just get a bunch and then I'll put it all into my audio file here under music and um, import it all. And then I'll decide um, which one looks best with the footage because then I can get a more uh, better look. But I'll say I'll make an audio folder here and then I'm usually just going to make a music folder because I do add some sound effects sometimes in my videos. Um, but I'm going to come here, dog photo shoot, video, audio, wherever, wherever you put the music is where you want to select. And then you're just going to open all that. I have all my music here, different songs. So once you have your audio track file selected, usually what I'll do is I'll select a time length. So for example, this is not, I'm not doing a three minute video. This is a, a, a max one minute video for Instagram. So I need to make sure that my music comes in cleanly and comes out cleanly. You can do a fade, but usually I like cut it and see if I can just shorten music. So I'm usually gonna go to the end here, listen to it a bit, so then I'm gonna find I'm gonna find the beginning of the final hook because usually a song will uh, sorry, yeah hook the song will end with a hook so I'll find the beginning of that and it's right here so I'm gonna cut that and then I'm gonna find a hook early on in the song the first hook and I'm gonna switch those out and I'll find the first hook and I'm gonna cut that with the C tool to open up the cutting tool and then I'm gonna press the V 
So C to open up cut and uh, the V uh, key to open up the selector. I'm going to select that, delete that, and then I'm going to do something called ripple delete, which will delete the space in between clips. So I'll just come here, delete, and my other clip will fly over. So then you listen to see if it connects. So I just have to fix that up a bit just to make sure it sounds better. But okay, so I did that and pretty much, yeah, that's what I do. That's how I cut music normally. So now I listen to the cut. You guys can listen as well. Tell me if it sounds good. And it all ends well, I don't know. It sounds pretty smooth. It, it could be smoother, but it sounds pretty smooth. Sometimes I'll put a constant power. It's, it smoothens it out a bit, but at the same time, uh, it's pretty smooth and no one's really going to notice it. So now you see I have a smooth song, all the same effect with a good ending where there's kind of a slow fade and I can put a title or something. And it drops just under the minute mark, literally one frame under the minute mark. That's freaking ballers for me. But then... Now comes the hardworking portion. There are techniques out there where you can select multiple clips. Um, oh, I forget how to do it, unfortunately, but you can select multiple clips and you can make it input into the sequence. But I'm not gonna do that today because I wanna make a more detailed edit. So what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll, you know, just first of all, never overthink it. Always just start. So I'm just gonna come here and say, okay, Let's start it with, there was a shot in here I like. This shot of the dog eating shit. So bang, the shot's in. I know I'm gonna slow it down because I want a very intense, maybe not 50, bang. So there's gonna be a little thing I start. Then there's another cut. What I'm gonna do is come in here, choose my clips, place my clips in, always double click on it, and only select the video portion, which here you can select audio, here you can select video. Then also if you use the I and the O key, you can select your in and out point. So O here, and this is the clip I'll, sec I'll select. If I want over here, I put the I here and the O here, and that's what I'll select, and then that's what I drag in kind of thing. So I'll drag in clips, and I'll find the cuts, because you always want to edit to the cut. So for example, here, there's a dang kind of thing. Then here, there's a it changes, it changes note pretty much. So there, I would put my first clip of the dog, and then I would add a second clip here. And then a third clip here. And then another clip. And I would just do that. And you just have to be creative with your cuts and things like that all through the video. But that is pretty much the general aspect of it is just putting all your clips in and then playing around with them. So I'm going to put all my clips in here. And then I'm going to show you guys what I made. And we're going to see how we can change clips to make them better, to add transitions and things like that. But the first thing you really want to do is just put the rough cut out there so you have a basis and you know what is going on kind of thing. So uh, let's go and do that. I'm just going to make a quick apology for the audio. I did not know it was really cracking up there, but um, we're going to continue on. I hope the audio is better now. I fixed it. Um, and I'm going to try not to put um, too much in the final edit. Okay, boys and girls, I am back here. Um, so I got all my clips laid out here, um, as you can see. And this is going to be the bulk of the work. So just know that you have done the majority of my workflow. Um, this is actually a really cute shot. Um, but pretty much, this is all the timeline. Now it comes to editing and adding effects that you want to add. So um, first of all, what I would usually do is add my speed ramps. Because there's two types of effects. Effects that touch the footage, so overlays. And there's effects that affect the the whole composition of it. So for example, um, where was it? There was somewhere, let me find it. So right here, I wanted to add a speed ramp. So if you don't know what that is, you're gonna have to make sure your footage is at 100% um, speed regular. But what it is, is it's changing the speed of the exact same clip. So you'll come in here, right click, time remapping speed. Then you wanna make sure you open up so that you can see this line here. See this middle line here? This is the line you wanna make sure you can see. So what you're going to do, you're going to want to use the P, the point tool, um, which is up here, this one, the pen tool, sorry. Or you can press P to open it up. I usually use P. And you're going to want to find where you want to slow it down. So let's say right here, this is where I want to slow it down. So I'm going to put a point there. I'm going to just extend that a bit. Then here you can make the slow down gradual. But what you have is the two lines and there's the point. So what, the tr there's going to be a transition in between this point. So here I'm going to drop my speed down to 40%. So here it's at 100, slows down to 40%. And as you can see, it extended the clip because 40% means more, there's going to be more footage, right? Because it's slower. 
Um, so here you can see there's a transition. You can also clip here and then grab these points. This will smoothen it out. But as you can see, this is what the effect's gonna go. So then you can play around just to get your timing right. I want it on waiting to slow down. So I actually need to make it a, oh, oops, a lot shorter here, like that. So that's pretty much um, the one effect you can add. Other than that effect, to keep it simple, because I don't, usually I won't add too many effects to a video like this, just because I like it super clean. But I've had the idea to um, to do re sort of reverses. So what it's going to be here is you're going to see this is a super cute shot, by the way, but I might move this clip. Then, for example, you come here where you want this clip to reverse. Usually on a beat, you want most things to happen on a beat. You're going to duplicate that clip and make sure that the end of it is at the start of it. So pretty much this is the clip twice in a row. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to reverse speed. So as you can see, it goes one direction and there's kind of like a jump back. And also you just want to clean up your cuts usually at this point. Um, so like for me here, this cut is off. So I'm just going to move that over and then I can clean that up. And then like if I come here, I zoom in and I can see my audio. You usually want it just a second before because then it hits on that beat like that. Okay, so that's those effects. I shot all this handheld, so a big thing when you shoot handheld is you're going to want to make sure you put on warp stabilizer. And if you don't know what warp stabilizer is, pretty much it's simple. It is a stabilizing effect, and that's the core of it. So if I pop this on here, um, oh yeah, and I forgot that you can't use warp stabilizer with slow-mo, so what you have to do is you have to duplicate the clip, always duplicate, and then you're going to nest a clip. And what nesting means is it's taking, it's compressing everything you did with that clip, so all this is now is a nested clip. I can't see the slowdown on this. This thinks it's 100% speed now, even though this clip is 40% speed. So it just resets everything, but keeps the effect. So you can kind of act as a compressor. Now I'm going to throw my warp stabilizer on. Make sure you duplicate it because if you mess up this, if you want to go back and change stuff, you need the original clip. You can't go backwards from here. But what warp stabilizers do is it analyzes the whole sequence and then it'll stabilize it for you. So for example here, that is not stable at all. Um, let, that's a bad example of a clip. Let me find a different clip. For example, this clip. You see how there's a little shake in it? That's We're not looking for that, right? I want a buttery smooth. And I shot this handheld, which I usually do just because I have more of an advantage and angles and things like that. But now I need to stabilize it because I do want it to look buttery smooth. And you can get super buttery smooth footage with handheld shots. So now I'm going to stabilize it. And you can see super stable. You see that? I'm going to go through all the clips, stabilize the ones I need. If I don't need stabilization, there's no point because it's going to crop it in. And then finally, the last effects I'm going to put on for this video, depending what type of video, I will put more creative effects. So you can put things like flashes, cuts. It's all about creativity. But for this, I'm going to keep it very simple. Finally, it's a color grade. A color grade is very important for your footage. I shot my footage in log format, so it's very... Um, dull you can see dull shadows like for example there's certain clips it's very dull there's not a lot of color in it so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to come here and add a simple adjustment layer i'm going to go new item adjustment layer here it's going to show you your sequence settings usually that's all right just pop it in just make sure it's the same sequence and you're going to throw it on it's kind of just like a blank video you could think of it but um it's going to be on there so you can see adjustment layer and you want to make sure it stands across all on top of all your stuff but if you do have text, make sure you put it on top because or else it'll mess with the hues of your text. Then you're going to come here. You can either go to Workspace's color, which I'll, I'll do for you guys so it's super easy. Um, but you can also just open the Lumetri color tab, which is sometimes what I will do. Lumetri color tab is an effect in its own, but it, it has to do with color. So here, Lumetri color panel right on the left. I'm going to make sure this is kind of big because, you know, you want to make sure you can see your footage if you're going to be coloring it and select the adjustment layer. And then you can come in here, either input LUTs, they have preset LUTs, like example, Alexia, Log, Alexia, all this, all these LUTs, or you can do it yourself. So you can add contrast, you can add highlights, you can drop the shadows. 
You can add the whites. You can add the drop the blacks. You can make it. You can just come in here and really just play around. Like for example, this. I would really want this to be a warm shot, but at the same time, I want there to the shadows to be visible. And then it's it's in the end, it's all your choice. That's the best part. Is right here. I, you can even edit the clips individually, but usually I'll just edit all the LUT and hope that it looks good on every clip. But sometimes you do have to do micromanagement. But you can come in here, add some sh some highlight to some yellows. But that is pretty much it. So I'm going to finish editing this video. And then I'm going to show you guys how I export it, how I get it ready to post. And then finally, um, I'll show you guys the my final video. And you guys can send me your final video um, that you use my uh, kind of little quick edit tutorial here to, to make. So uh, let me do that for you guys real quick. Okay, guys. So I just finished the edit. This is it right here. I got the color grade. I got everything on there. So how you're going to export it is you're going to come to your last frame. You can cut this portion out. There's nothing in it if you want, but I'm just going to leave it for, I'm going to cut it right there and drag that in. And one weird thing is when you put your out point, which is I and O, remember in and out, or you can come to sequence and you can say, go to in, go to, uh, mark in, mark out. So I'm going to mark out. It'll always mark it one frame after. So if my cursor is here and I do out, it marks it here. So you just got to make sure you frame it kind of kind of like that. But you're going to mark your into out. So it's going to select all this. And you're going to come to File, Export, and Export Media. So if you didn't see that, File, Export, Media. Okay? And then you're going to come here and you're going to see all these settings. You're going to be like, what the hell is going on? First thing I usually do. Output name. That's the name and the location where you're going to export it. Usually what I'll do is I'll come to my dog video or whatever video you're doing and just find a folder where you can export it to and you can find it later. So finals exports is where I put it and then I'm going to name it dog video basil because that's the dog's name. Um, and then make sure you're in H.246. I don't know the settings too well, but for a simple um, for you guys, you can do match source high bit rate. That's usually a pretty good one for you unless you're exporting to something already. So for example, if I'm already exporting to YouTube, I might as well do YouTube 1080, um, 1080p. But since I do not have anything I'm exporting it to, oh, sorry, um, I have my own presets here. So that's what I'm going to use. But you don't need to need that. You don't need this. Just use one of these, these presets here. And then as you learn, you will understand how everything works. But if you do want to see a video on me explaining my presets and how I export settings in detail, then let me know. But other than that, that's it. Just make sure you have audio export, export audio and export uh, video, sorry, checked off. And then you should be good. Also, I used to like check uh, render um, maximum render quality. No matter what type you're exporting, if that's not checked, make sure you check that just to get that higher quality. You know, if not, it's not the end of the world, but I like to do that. And then you can either press Q and it'll um, do it in the Adobe uh, an Adobe Media Encoder, or you can export it right here. My computer is pretty fast, so this is going to be pretty fast. So I'll come back to you guys when it's done exporting. So I just finished my export. Um, I'm going to play the video for you guys so you guys can see what my final product was. People have written books, some have a great look that covers the magazines for kids who are 17. But I don't know what to do, staring into the blue sky and just waiting for a sign. Some, they are certain of what awaits them when it all ends. But well, I don't know. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys learned a couple things. I'm debating if I'm gonna start vlogging again soon because it's been something I've wanted to do just to document my life and show you guys kind of the day-to-day -day tips and tricks I can give you guys about photography. 
and pretty much my whole process in learning this thing, this beautiful art, this super fun art. But um, thanks for watching. I'm not going to keep you guys for long. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, share with your friends, um, all your videographer, photographer friends, or people who just are trying to get into it. And um, have a good day. Peace. Oh my gosh.